this is a really special talk. That's why I didn't want to do the whole Zoom thing. That's why Brian's helping out, letting folks in. And I really wanted to share these things with you so that you could see how incredibly useful it is to transform your soil and easy it is. Because so many people are so intimidated by soil. So many people are so worried about soil but everything's possible. So let's get into it. Let's transform some things today. So what if, what if, mm, you've done everything right with your soil. You, uh, you read all the books, you listened to the extension center. You said, I've done everything. Is it really everything? <laughs> down to the specific microbe or ion and enzyme. And, you know, at this point, most people go, what, what? But what if you actually needed to go down to the individual enzyme and microbe and then be able to scale it back up into clear actions? Obviously, that, like, that's what we desire, right? I mean, it just feels like going down that deep is crazy when you don't know that it all can scale back up into these five completely understandable macro hands-on and that's what actual fluency is in life we take all these complicated things and then we turn them into this such something that becomes so simplistic we forget about it when we're learning to to speak a new language it is so complicated it sounds like they're just speaking gobbledygook and and then suddenly you're like oh well that they're just asking you to open the door dude it's just the simplest thing in the world and then, you know, you start a, a physical task or a sport and it, you, everything is all discombobulated. And then you start turning it into what becomes grace and it becomes this fluid motion. And it looks so simple, just like Bob Marley bass lines. Have you guys you ever tried, you know, Bob Marley and the Whalers bass lines? They sound so simple. Go play them the way they played them in the pocket, the way they played them. And oh my gosh, you'll see. There's like this unbelievable grasp and fluency musically involved there. And with soil, I, I want to be fluent. Do you guys want to be fluent? You know, because that's what today's about. But wait, before I go any further, I'm Matt Powers. I was a former music. I'm a former musician. Uh, I was a professional musician. I still play music. But I, and I do all the soundtracks for my stuff, but I was a touring musician. It was my dream. And I became a public school teacher so that I could get health care for my family and my wife, especially because uh, she got cancer. And I left that whole world behind, uh, even though many of my best friends are still there. And uh, and and always oh, trying to get me to come back. <laughs> but in the process, I became a citizen scientist. I went from a public school teacher to a citizen scientist, and it was this incredible progression. And it really was through Kickstarters. It really was through classroom interaction, really incredible groups of people where I interact, I interact more with my audience and my students than any other person online that I know of. So, I mean, we talk sometimes two to three hours um a week live um and and that's just for one class i mean you stack a few of these classes together it gets intense but i know my students and they've they've encouraged me many of them were and and i say they're my students they are but but these are people with phds who are teaching at ucla or at harvard or stanford and they're encouraging me and and telling me you know you should get this microscope you should check this out you should check that out and in service, I was transformed. And my boys are big. My wife, my, my wife has cancer, uh, has had cancer seven times, um, but we've defeated it every time. Uh, she lost her thyroid and they did the radiation. And so there's consequences for that. And 
we're always focused on health. We're we're now into the most natural side of biohacking. We're now into trying to up our health, our energy, um, our vitality in all these different ways. And it always leads us back to the garden, to the soil, to the water, to the air, to the things that we're going to be talking about today. And, in, you know, in this process, I wrote over two, uh, 24 um, books. I have over a dozen online courses. I, 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 was a, I was a teacher at a school with no, no books. We, we, we had to create the curriculum ourselves. So I, I, I just got really into it. <laughs> also, I don't watch TV. Um, but but, but I, 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 love, I love serving. I love creating things, especially things that don't exist. I love creating things that don't exist. So I created a lot of curriculum, standard-based curriculum that can be just put into schools right now. Um, and teacher's guides that accompany them so the teachers don't even need the training. They can just do it right now. Um, and that's why homeschools and private schools are doing it and universities are doing it. Uh, and select high schools are doing it. Uh, and uh, certain areas of North America have credited my work as well. But I just, it, it just was this thing and it just gained momentum. And it's, and it all really just to, you know, simplify it, generalize it was creating that bridge to a regenerative future, that academic training and direction and understanding and grounding so that you could have people who are the entrepreneurs, the workers, the thinkers, the innovators to create that new economy. Because we need an economy that's going to regenerate the, the soil, the water. The watersheds are just trashed. The national forests of America are trashed. We have to do so much more. And the greenwashing, the tokenized efforts, um, the top-down nonsense, all of it has to go. Uh, and we need authentic, real, regenerative community-based science where it's transparent, it's authentic, and it's empowering. And it makes for better food, better water, safer neighborhoods. Oh, everything we want. Yeah. And then we can showcase it across communities all over the world. And other communities can say, that's how we're going to do it. And then inspire and be that change by standing and lifting where we stand, where we have the greatest effect. So that's what I've been doing. Um, today we're talking about the five keys, though. Back on track. <laughs> so, so those five keys, I flashed them at the beginning. They make the soil regenerative. All the soil on earth, all the soil on earth came to be through a process of regeneration. Before there were plants on on the earth on the the soil the terrestrial part of the earth um there was mushrooms but before that it was barren yeah kind of crazy right and so the formation of soils we actually can like archaeologically track these things and we know the pieces that came together to create this engine that formed the top soils of the earth that we eventually were like hey man you know we can farm this that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> that process, we can speed it up. And it happens all the time. In certain places of the world, it happens faster. Certain pockets of situations, it happens faster. And once we can know these pieces, we can put them together and amplify them and have a synergy that forms between them that makes it form even faster than people, uh, ha most people have seen. Um, there are some people that have seen doc d documentation and examples of these things. Um, if you study Terra Preta and you know that they take it down to 30 centimeters and then it regrows to meters, like, da -da, like, like you know, several meters within a few years, they sell it because it does that. And that means that the biology is so vigorous, it's, it's regenerative. So we know that there are these examples that are beyond belief, though that's real, but it's rooted in these five keys that I'm sharing today.
and they're gonna seem really simple at first like like you just saw the air and water right air and water mad so mind-blowing but you would just wait when you see the way they actually fit together and when you understand how what the air actually is it changes everything okay so stick with me we're going to go through these things in ways you've probably never heard before and i'm going to put them together in ways that are going to allow you to see the world around you with new eyes thank you for being here today air and water did you know that the air is nitrogen carbon oxygen hydrogen and, and there's more things in there right right but that's what it primarily is those are the same components that all biology is made of all organic matter yep it's the same thing the air is life. air breath Ugh, life isn't that wild the air has everything that you know this is not like plants are clinging to the sides of cliffs and you know they're breathing just the air and there's no soil around and they're just surviving. You're like, what is going on? Well, the components for life happen to be surrounding it, raining down on it. So when we look at the carbon cycle, just to, I, I like to go down to the cycles. I like to go down to the particular parts of what we're talking about, because when we do, we see nature. If it's done right, right? We see nature and the nature tells us something or a lot of things. And, and, and so let's just look at this together. Photosynthesis is the engine of the carbon cycle. We see that, right? It's also the engine of the car oxygen cycle. So it turns CO2 and water and light into sugars and oxygen. How sweet is that? And it's those sugars that go down that feed the bacteria and fungi that form the soil organic matter tillage destroys this so the fundamental way that soils are formed the way we do tillage the way we're doing the watering the way we're doing the uh synthetic um fertilizers all of that purified um synthetic chemicals they tear the soil up we'll get into more as to why but when they do that, it, it releases all that carbon. And the reality is all fossil fuels were once organic matter. So it's all once living matter. It's if, if it just, if it, if it only were just CO2, it would all go back down into the, the plants. And that means the carbon side of things, when you can't talk about burning, we can take care of just fine. It's the pollution side that they're sweeping under the rug and just be like, just don't look over there. And I know there's been all the accidents and everything, but they're not like linking these things together as to like where they're coming from. Um, and better living through chemistry uh, is, is, is the invisible problem that is all connected and is the real problem. The reality is we need more life. We need more photosynthesizing plants. We need to stop chemically treating things caustically, which is oxidative, loss of energy. And fungi, you know, I mean, more than 10 times, more than 11 times the amount of CO2 that's released, fungi is releasing in decomposition. Everything, every all winter in the forest, all that decomposes, right? Fungi does it. CO2 is released. That's normal. And that's good because the plants need it. And the thing is we can accept more if we have more plants, if we have more soil, if we have more soil life. It's, we just don't have those things in place. And then the oxygen cycle. Um, this is the part that people also, um, this will never make it to the mainstream narrative, but just look up the studies on the, the decline of oxygen globally and you'll find endless like endless studies on this it's not no one's saying it's going up it's going down and they don't know why there's lots of arguments why uh one of the reasons uh they argue is that our atmosphere itself is leaking um and shrinking the other thing that people don't realize is how important the oceans are 
when we kill the oceans, there goes our oxygen. It doesn't matter what we do on land um, in, in the final equation. If we lose the oceans, we lose the whole system. Hydrogen cycle. Um, did you know that the hydrogen cycle is also the context for pH? Yeah, yeah. As photosynthesis happens, we're literally having pH play out in real time. The power of hydrogen is pH. And so it's logarithmic. And so uh, one side, the acidic side is all protons and the alkaline side is hydroxide. And, and because the old way that we used to do everything in farming was around pH, the cations and anions, do you see how they're related? Everything was related towards that. So, so it always was a chemistry game for them. But, but there's a bigger picture here. But this is part of the picture. So we, 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 we have to hold on to these things. And then nitrogen. Seeing all these cycles put together gives us context in a way that is going to flow, okay? The nitrogen cycle, look at the air. The air is actually mostly nitrogen, okay? And endophytic fixation, I learned about that for the first time. Oh, well, it was years ago now. But, but when I her first heard about it, I thought of Dave Jackie. I remember Dave Jackie, like I like was like, like a newborn Permian, like coming onto the internet. And I'm like, I think honey locust can fix its own nitrogen. Dave Jackie, I am a college professor. Slam, you are wrong. Never talk again. And I was, was, was bothered, so bothered by that. And I did so much research and I, and I proved that they were, that, that, things were happening that you can't have nitrogen inside the seeds at a high level if it wasn't coming from somewhere. <laughs> I was able to like prove all the stuff around the endophytic information. And I just felt so frustrated. And then when this, it was like the crown jewel of the argument. And I was like, oh, and then I realized, oh, wait, I can go look at it myself. And all hairs all trichomes because plant hairs are called trichomes all hairs on plants have nitrogen fixing bacteria and fungi in them thank you dr james francis white for that research and it's so it, and, and i was looking at it in the face seeing the triangulation of evidence being like how how could he do that to me and made me feel so bad yeah. this is like back in the day with facebook wars I mean, 10 years ago, you had all these people, these like published authors on there, just like mud wrestling it out and saying nasty things to each other. And I'm a public school teacher being like, you all know you can just screenshot each other and then you permanently have a record of what you've just said. Oh dear, guys, it's called your digital footprint. I teach 10th graders about this. And so like, for me, I just was like, well, I'm just going to keep teaching. Uh, and that, like, that's why I'm still doing it. Um, that's why I'm here 10 years later. Uh, so this was, this was the thing is that people back in the day had no, and I'm sure Dave Jackie, well, I don't know. Maybe he's probably heard about it now since um, uh, Jeff Lowenfels read my book and then wrote his book based upon um, the rise of phagy um, uh, work that James White did. So, so the, the trichome information is coming from James White as well. James, James is a person that's, like this. Is, you you, you want to know the reason why, like I use a microscope the way I do is it, it was originally I got a microscope because of Elaine and then it just sat there for years because it gave me headaches. And then talking with James White and all these incredible individuals in the microscopy world rejuvenated all that. And maybe take that deep dive and buy the next level. And when I bought the next level, it changed everything. So, so huge thanks to Dr. James White.
broad forking. Let's talk solutions here, Matt. So it's air and it's water. Right. And we need to understand that it's the structure that creates that. So if you've got compaction, you don't have any structure. And, and, and so broad forking is a very gentle way of doing it. This is what John, uh, John Martin Fortier is doing. This is what um, farmers have learned all over the place how to do. It's so simple. It's so easy, but it makes such a huge difference because you bring down the oxygen into the soil. And then the oxidation is going to liberate certain things. It's going to um, bind up certain things. It's going to change the energy. It's going to change the pH temporarily. And when it does that, it allows the plant to have, well, it allows the plant to have a different palate, but it also relieves certain stressors the plant could be experiencing. So it's easier for it to get up those, those minerals because the plant literally has to release energy to counterbalance the environment it's in. Save water. Okay, so water retention really goes back to this good soil structure, high organic matter, and then paramagnetism. And paramagnetism is a weak magnetism. Um, but it's related to particle size and it's related to uh, minerals, uh, paramagnetic min minerals. <clears throat> so you can be adding compost and compost tea. You can be adding biochar and bone char. You can be adding rock dust. All of this um, helps contribute to soil organic matter as well. Dovetailing with all of that is photosynthesis and the plant roots. So we all know about sun hits the plants, but did you know that in the ocean, the oxygen isn't gassed off? It's released into the water, so it alkalinizes and oxidizes the water. Yeah, very, very different. It doesn't do that. because I mean, in the soil, it gasses it off, it vents it off so that you have an imbalanced equation. So the plant's just going to continuously acidify and reduce the soil and build up the energy and the organic matter in the soil. That's why you end up someday with like peat bogs, right? Where it's like 100% organic matter. Yeah, it's super acidic. And, and then you can have flips of things when it gets super wet and all that. And I get all that. But, but, but my point, and that's because the other side of the equation right there. Because then you have the brackish water and you have the ocean and things start flipping. So, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. But that's why we got to let the plants do their thing. They're going to bring energy to the soil. They're going to acidify the soil. And if you're like, whoa, 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 natural plants and acidity and acidity is moisture. Everything used to be more moist. So those natural plant society folks, I love you. I love your ardor, but let's place it appropriately and understand pH is moisture and the plants want to make it more, more reduced, okay? And so that means more acidic, more energy. Um, the, 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 the reality is, is that there are a few plants that will release hydroxide. There are a few non-mycorrhizal plants out there. They are the weedy ones. They are the repair mechanisms sometimes. But they are not meant to be the world. And the dominant, and they don't, in secession, they disappear almost immediately. Um, and, and when we look at this, and we look at photosynthesis, and we put these things together, we think about those sugars in the center there, Remember simple sugars? Simple sugars are like the table sugar, the monosaccharides. Everyone's like, ah, don't, don't take that, Matt. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have the white sugar. That stuff's scary. But polysaccharides are the mushroom medicinals. Paul Stamets, you know, Michael Medicinals, his book. They're like polysaccharide one, polysac like that's the medicinal, that's the cancer fighting. It's polysaccharides, they're sugars. That's whether you can digest them. So these are very different sugars, right? One are long chain, one are short chain. 
one is easy to break down and one isn't good for us one's good for us right for our bodies we're talking about our health remember i'm <laughs> i'm not a medical doctor i'm not giving out any medical advice here we're talking about soil and plants so non-reducing reducing remember i said reduction is the addition of energy you're reduced when you get a lot of energy it's chemistry they're all confused in chemistry sometimes with the wording um it's because we grandfather things in um and a lot of times um or it made sense to the people or it makes sense from a very certain angle they don't do things to, you know so non-reducing means that you're not adding energy to it like you're 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 adding those sugars the sugars aren't giving you energy you're taking the polysaccharides they're giving you energy the same thing with the with the, with the plants when they're turning the sugars in in into those chains whether it's short or long if it's short it's pathogen bait just like with our bodies the simple sugars feed the candida and oh no yeah it's the same thing with plants they have the same thing and so have we started thinking about this like are we testing no 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 people aren't testing for this yet <laughs> this is why it's so important okay you're with me people are still doing the bricks thing being like look at my high sugars ah what kind of sugars people okay harriet mella is on top of this she's talking about fructane okay uh, okay um when they actually get the right food they become power plants that feed the soil life and build the soil structure build the soil organic matter at higher levels then compost yeah because it's micro it's micro it's i want to say micro ionized it's wrong um it's it's the micro sized uh because they're releasing humic acids they're releasing sugars and then those protons at the same time they're acidifying the sugar and what's carbonic humic all right it's organic matter the carbon is organic matter. It goes out, starts bonding to things. That's it. The thing is, they've made it so complicated. And the reality is, unless you have a framework like we're talking about today, like regenerative soil, like the thing I had to create, it seems way too complicated to develop fluency. But once you learn the language, you're like, uh huh, feed me more. I get it. It's, it's, it's actually beautiful. It's complicated, but when they fit together, it becomes a fluid, simple motion. And you get, you guys can get this. You guys can get this. All right. So not only that, the organic matter is the storage for that energy, those electrons. And then when they don't get enough of the energy from the sun, the pathogens come and clean it up. So the plants need the time to digest the sugars. They need the support and the minerals to digest the sugars. They also need enough sunlight to even do the right things. And if they get not enough sunlight, they get taken out. They don't have the right minerals, they get taken out. This is why the soil is and our management together make everything possible. Remember I said that they needed to be able to process the sugars. There's actually a time frame for all of these things. And if they don't have enough minerals to fit into the process. Okay, so minerals have charges on the outside of them that are different. You know, the atomic weight and the charge and the electron, they're actually keys. And they need different amounts of different ones at different parts in their cycles to process all this stuff and do photosynthesis in general in the beginning. So, Woo. when they do it right they make incredible plants they make medicinal foods but for the most part folks don't know any of this and so they create these plants they're like oh that's organic you can see from the spots ah well beyond organic regenerative organic has no spots and shines and smells and looks so unbelievable and it's pest resistant and you're like how is this real because it went into strength not a stress signal strength and that's what regenerative is it's strong and and 
you know, it's just like our bodies, right? It relates right back. I don't eat a big meal right before bed. I try to leave three hours. Um, I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to do the most natural biohacking stuff I can. Good sleep, you know, timing my food. Uh, and, and, you know, when you eat that big meal right before bed, you get indigestion, right? Plants are the same way. So this is why we need to give plants rest. This is why people can't do just endless floodlights and then let the plants grow forever and then harvest them. You get plants that are not good. You got to respect the time. They don't have a choice. They must continue their journey. They're not like us. They can't take sick days. They can't hop out of the ground and walk over to the shade and go, I was really heating up out. No, they're stuck. And so we are, we, and the thing is so many of us, when we scale, we're like, okay, well, this really needs to be thought about beforehand because I have two acres and I can't just like on the drop of hat, change everything for all the plants and do a little bit extra watering. It's on a timer and I have an only the amount of water I have. I budgeted it out for the season and yeah. So it really matters. And that's why I made sure like all the stuff I'm telling you, all the stuff I've been teaching, it scales and people can rely upon it. And when you're powered by the sun, uh, when you're at acreage level, um, you're able to turn the flow, you're able to write your ship. You just have to know that you set the things up in proper order and 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 you amend it and you and and so that you take off and and you know and and you can do things you can do foliar sprays you can do lots of things right 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 you can save things um but it's very different uh and it's it's extra time it's extra money especially at that farm scale um and then when it comes to your plants if they're having a hard, you know hard few days they, they might not be able to come back from that. Um, they, they, they may, you know, they may be stunted. So it's really important that we have these things in place beforehand because plants are primarily passive. I know it's wonderful to think that they've got control of their situation and they're masters of their own universe. But then we know they are. Look at the plant. It's rooted right there. It's vulnerable. That deer can come and get it at any time. That raccoon that ate all the corn that year. Yeah. So like we're here to protect you plant and they're passive. So the light comes and they just take it. They just take it in and start. And if they don't have the minerals for their engine to work properly, they're going to be grinding their gears. So you got to make sure they've got the minerals there, the building blocks. The, the, to make sure that their engine works properly and smoothly and that they can power through the stages of growth. And the way they do that is with biology because they evolved with the biology always there. We only invented this idea of sterilizing things recently and it hasn't gone well. There's an argument that the reason we have all these health problems is because we've sterilized ourselves and our world. And that's why you see all these things where people are inoculating themselves, people are drinking fermented beverages, people are taking their gut biome seriously. Again, people are looking at indigenous people and saying, hey, look at their gut biome, man. They're having gut biome jealousy. And it's because they realize they're missing key components of their nutrition, their health, and their, I think their, their, their mental well being. Uh, because so much of our gut brain is our brain and, and it's the mood. It's the mood. Again, not a doctor, not diagnosing, but check those things out. You can see them for yourself. Um, you can look at them up. Uh, these, the, I'm, you know me, I'm studying this thing myself. So, so they've evolved in place, just like our guts evolved, evolved in place with the organisms. So what does that mean? We need to help these plants process and digest things completely. Okay. We need to make sure that they're doing their job, reducing and energizing the soil and uh, uh, unlocking all the, the, the nutrients. And when things are strong, when they have enough energy, they actually can do the hydroxide when they want to. 
and it's on the older root hairs and the older roots. Uh, as they age, they go from more acidic to alkaline on the roots. It's pretty epic. They've got to figure it out. <laughs> the plants, uh, and the thing is, it's um, and on. Uh, and so the plant is using its signaling at different times and places to create pockets that they can do hydroxide and get the anions from. And 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 on uh, even even with that, on the whole, they are reducing. That's why we say they're re reductive. Um, it's 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 a fascinatingly dynamic picture. If we enhance photosynthesis, it affects everything. So their discretion, their ability to pull from areas of further energy demands opens up. Hopefully that makes sense. This is why we aim towards 6.5. So they have pivot power as plants. It's, it's like a rest for most plants. It's like a restful area for them to be 6.5 pH and they reach with their, their energy and they put out protons or hydroxide to get what they need when they need it in the amounts they need. And then they, 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 they dump large amounts of organic matter into the soil. And there is a debate about what pieces of that are secretion versus ex excretion. I know it's, a, it, it, I, 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 I fell in love originally with the cakes and cookie metaphor, um, but it is a lot different than that in reality. But the reality is all of those lower order reactions start with the sun hitting the plant leaves. And we can enhance that. We can make sure our plants have the minerals to fully photosynthesize. Did you guys know that there are these essential plant nutrients? There's almost 20 of them. And you're like, oh, well, I have a plant that, you know, has you know, a couple more than those for, well, th these are essential plant nutrients for all plants. So, and, and it's a, so, so it's really important to understand that when we compost and unless it's been gassed off through the hot composting process, these things are there. If it's healthy soil and healthy plants that we're composting. And so the biodynamic concept of keeping things in place and you wouldn't do a hot compost to do that. You would use like EM and fermentation and to keep all those nutrients and micronutrients cycling in on site. Um, but you need to know the cycles for each of these and the corrosion rates for each of these to understand the sweet spots and the timing and the releases for all of these. Like molybdenum. Do you guys know that molybdenum is essential for nitrogen fixation? Yeah. This is why, you know, there's farmers who are doing molybdenum sprays on their, on their, on their plants at certain points to help their, your cover crop do better and all this, you know, notice how it's in the organic matter. Uh, th this is the thing. So many of the problems that you're going to see if you've got not just compost, but properly amended and spiked compost, you can take care of these problems all at once. And, and, and you can, you can take your compost and split it off this way for a foliar spray and have those minerals that are spiked for that there. And then you have the soil spo soak one, which is different minerals, uh, and different, and they're all different timing as well. But my point is, is that when you know this, it changes everything. There's a sophistication that immediately starts coming up and, and a realization when certain soils, like in Australia, um, you'll have soils that are, and you, you have, I know you have soils that are sometimes high in cobalt, but there are soils that are de deficient in this. And same thing in certain places in America. Um, this is not as common, but in over farmed areas and in places where the soils have not had an ice age like Australia, you have low cobalt levels and cobalt is the centerpiece of B12. Cobalt, in other words, is essential for all life. All the soil food web relies upon B12. B12 is a biological vitamin. So it's critical 
the cellular metabolism. So without cobalt, we actually don't have the microbes persist. So, so we need cobalt to be cycling. We need cobalt to be present. Um, if you're in an area that's deficient in certain things like cobalt, like selenium, like zinc, uh, let's get into it. Uh, or let's start with something more, more generalized, like calcium, Matt, I know calcium. Okay. Okay. Did you know that most of the world's calcium has been released by mycorrhizal fungi? Yeah. Yeah. They're the ones releasing it for the most part. It was all mineral. And um, it's their enzy enzymatic reactions, their digestive enzymes, externally digesting everything around them that's releasing it. And it makes cool crystals. You see the cool crystal? Yeah. That's phosphorus and calcium. Oxalate crystal, right? It, it, you see how it's on the hyphae? Why do you think it's on the hyphae? Rather convenient. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, they're stored in these crystals. Um, let's get into this. So uh, the mycorrhizal fungi is the primary way that phosphorus has also become bioavailable. Remember that when you add mycorrhizal fungi to your roots, it increases your uptake of phosphorus by 10,000 times because it increases your surface area. And all they do is liberate calcium and phosphorus, right? And remember how I talked about how, you know, AMF increases your calcium uptake by so high the other day when I was doing that. It's like, I mean, what is it, a thousand times? Something crazy high number. Well, now you know why. This is, this is what the digestive enzymes release. And if you look here at this vermicompost organic matter chunk, their di the the parts of it that are um, messy, glowing that's fungal. The parts that are pinprick dots, the little roundies, um, the those are bacteria. So this is how they're working together on vermicompost worm castings, and that energy that's on the outside of that that vermicompost. Um, worm casting is going to form a crystal there too. And that energy is being stored in that crystal. Because what is phosphorus associated with? Do you guys remember? Well, if you read my book, you know that it's energy. And if you paid attention, <laughs> high school or, or college science, Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, boom, the energy in our cell, right? It's a cellular energy vital to all life, not just humans, all life. But it's also the information and discretion. So when we want like to be wiser, when we want more energy, when we want more focus and discretion to make better decisions, um, we want to be able to tap that as a resource. Fungi does that with crystals. And it's pretty wild when you think about it because they're growing these highways that everything's using to traverse. They're pumping phosphorus through them that glows. And they're creating these crystals that are really, really bright that are like guide stones. And they're positioned out throughout, distributed like micro networks and micro power plants and backup batteries, uh, redundancies of all sort. And this is fungi. You know how they talk about the super highway of fungi? This is it. Welcome to actually seeing it, to actually knowing it. Let's go back. I'll show you. Look at that. See it? Now you see it. Usually, they fight. They all hate each other. And it's the organic matter that allows them to work together. Your minerals, if it's all pure mineral, they all fight. 
they lock each other up. They're, the thing is, okay, remember I said their energy, their little key, um, their keys to other processes, they all combine and start locking each other up and block each other, cancel each other out. But if all those places are gummed up with organic matter, humic compounds, carbon, they're actually, they can't fight each other or really interact very well. And instead, you have something of a higher order above it with discretion, go through it and select what it needs. It's fantastic. This is the system of the world we live in. This is why I teach this stuff because it grounds me and roots me in a reality that just gives me comfort. The world's insane, but this is real and this makes so much sense. And it's joyous because I can participate and I can make things awesome. Uh, soil mineral deficiencies and antagonisms are often the limiting factor when everything else seems fine. All right. And so we can fix this by remembering these processes and these cycles, but it's all these cycles and it's understanding how they work together that gives us that insight. Soil organic matter, as I mentioned, it's just carbon. It's not that crazy. Um, it's what we talked about earlier. It's carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. That's what all living matter is. And that's what organic matter is. So when you isolate nitrogen or synthetic nitrogen, and you bring it in, and I know it's in a chemistry, you know, term salt when, when they bring it and then they water it in and then it disassociates, no doubt. But when it dissociates into a purified form, it's really incredibly important to recognize um, how it's essentially a, a hungry ghost. It just wants and wants and wants. And because it wants back to this, what it knows, this is natural. So all the synthetic chemicals all want to bond back. And so even your pure char, pure carbon, before it's biochar, will do the same thing. It will rip apart your soul humix. So this is pure char. We're going to charge it up with life and, 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 and specifically humic compounds before. So compost tea, minerals, biology, boom. And it's a magnet. It's going to just hold all that friends and it's not going to let it go because that's, that's the power of, of, of biochar and it holds three times its mass in water. So you want to water less this year, bring in the biochar. I've been feeling it. Um, the, the, this sand that was dry in certain parts dries out so fast. I go into my food forest. Oh, and it's so wet, just an inch or two down. And it's because there's biochar there. And so it also holds the nutrients. This is why my plants are this tall. I, I planted these fruit trees two months ago in my food forest. They're this tall. We'll have fruit on them next year. Okay. This is the power of life, the power of the proper nutrients, all of it working together. And when we have the right organic matter, it's going to buffer all those, the, those, those minerals that want to fight. It's going to hold the nutrients so they don't leach away. It's going to hold the life like you saw the little itty bitty life. And then the fungi, it is it. You know how fungi works. It's like, I will travel through the cell well now. That's fungi. So fungi, you can't like wash away. It is fungi. And then the hyphae is like, and I'll connect this biochar chunk and then this. And so it ties everything together. Again, this is how it's storing energy. It will inoculate that entire biochar chunk and use that energy. Um, so add that biochar. Now we've been talking this whole time about so biology, but let's go a little deeper. Uh, soil food web. If you don't know, 
Soul Food Web is it was a discovery made in the 80s and it has been the foundational touchstone that all of us have based and learned from and gone back to since. And this is the most advanced, this is the most researched, the most arrows, um, most components and interactions uh, of a soil food web diagram uh, that it's available. This is from Regenerative Soil. Most people know about this. They know that like, we got to bring in the, the, the compost so that it can feed the protozoa and the nematodes and they can feed the plant roots. Eh, we learned that this isn't primary. It's true. It's vital. We need to cycle those nutrients, but we also need to feed the rhizophagy cycle. And if we don't feed the rhizo rhizophagy cycle, we are missing fundamentals. Um, and so what does that look like? Uh, the, the biology, that is. This is the beam compost. This is a giant testate amoeba. And you can see the teeny little dots uh, are the bacteria inside it. But you can also see some of them outside of it. Remember that if there's a huge ring like an air bubble, that's a refraction. And it's actually a much smaller dot. So look to the small dots to identify bacteria um, size-wise. But eat those bigger refraction blur, blurry circles, that represents uh, usually a bacteria just, um, just at a different depth that you have to zoom in at. So um, these are just more images. I just want to show you some of these. Um, this is from the from, from the new book I'm working on right now that's not released yet, but will be soon. Uh, the pre-orders are open for this. On my website, thepermaculturestudent.com. Um, a lot of people aren't visualizing nematodes in the dark field. I don't know why. You can see things like in ways that, that just aren't possible um, uh, otherwise. Um, rhizophagy, I talked about that just a minute ago. This is what's primary for all roots everywhere. This is why compost tea is so vital, compost extract is so vital. And this is how root hairs are formed. And we can verify this ourselves. We can just, anyone can do that. It's amazing when we understand that we need to bring in the energy to not just store energy in the organic matter, but to stimulate and feed the microbes. Today, I was on a call um, with, with a bunch of my students and we were talking about how this purple non-sulfur bacteria, they literally can eat electrons and give electrons, just like the way the plant roots are giving electrons and, and then pulling off in exchange, pulling off the, um, the cations off the particles around them. They can do that sort of same thing. They can also, well, they can do a lot. Uh, they can feed four different ways. My point is, is that you are invigorating everything when you're doing this. And that's the beauty of this. Photosynthesis stacks all these functions, but it also is a stacked responsibility that if you don't see these things and they just hit, mm, we miss those opportunities. We get si sideswiped. Things don't turn out the way we, we, we expected because we missed one of those aspects. That's why I cover all this. And remember mycorrhizal fungi, what it actually looks like. Okay, we got to make sure we inoculate our plants. We got to give them the fungi that they need to thrive in the environment because it's going to increase their root surface area by 10,000 times. Their uptake of phosphorus at the same order. Their uptake of calcium by at least 10,000 times. They're, uh, it will allow the plant to behave at a completely different level. Like the range of the healthy plant before the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi doesn't even reach the range after you've inoculated it. They are different plants. And that's because these things evolve together. So inoculating those roots. Also with rhizobium, making sure that we have plants that have everything they need um, is, is critical. This is what it actually looks like. It's a page from the new book. And then inside the phloem. So we wanna cover the plant, all the surface of the plant, 
all the surface of the leaves, inside the roots, but also inside the phloem of the plant as well. We want to inoculate the plant inside and out. And that means biofertilizers. Those are the microbes that are going to feed and fertilize our plant. Biostimulants, those are the, th the microbes that are going to stimulate our plant to behave differently, to grow faster, to grow more fruit, to grow more roots, to be bushier, to uh, climb faster, to, to produce more buds, um, but also to stimulate the immunological reaction so that it's permanently on guard, so that it uh, protects itself. And then biocontrol. Some of these microbes can literally steal the iron from the other microbe so the other microbe dies. They can they, they cover the whole surface so there's no purchase area for that other microbe. And then they're buffers. So they actually make it so that as they, as they, you actually can't have, like, like they are the thing that dies first. They are the thing that processes things first. They are a buffer in the soil environment um, so that uh, they filter everything that comes in, but they also prevent things from coming in. It's an incredible combination of all of these aspects that they perform that plants evolved with. It's not just, wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> this is what our plants require. And we haven't been giving it to them as a culture of growers for generations. Soil biology has the greatest effect on pH and EH and nutrition. There are examples of soils that don't need nitrogen because the, the actual biology turnover is so high the amino sugars, the body parts of the, of, of the microarthropods and the other microbes are so high that they don't, they don't need to bring in any nitrogen of any sort. No, no manure, no nothing. Soil biology. We are waiting on, like, we're just sitting on our hands. We have all the pieces. I've been promoting it. I've been sharing it. I hope that you hear me because people are doubling their yields. People are having pest resistant, disease resistant. Uh, I mean, there, 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 there's, there's, there's the locusts in Africa eating everything and there's the regenerative soil farm is fine. This is happening in Africa. This is happening in India. This People are seeing that there is a pathway. And they're the outliers right now. And, and it's early days. So I'm so happy that you're here. This is a Johnson Sioux compost. This is what it looks like in situ, guys. Can feel a little chaotic at first, but then you're, you, you get to know it. My book will walk you through tons of these. Lots of examples, develop your eye. Um, yeah. It, the, the the biology, um, you can also create a sort of a highlighter effect. Um, check this out. So uh, the glowing um, rods, that's bacilli, and then the 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 round ones are cocci. Now the chains are streptococci. Not so good. <laughs> but this is a sample from someone. Um, and, and it's, 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 you can see the life. You can see how easy it is to identify these things, but how do we track it? How do we take all that information? You just threw a lot of information. Oh, nah, come on. What is that? Um, well, we can track and manage that using this book. This is why I created this book. I have an online course for it and all of that too, but this book I created, so it will be a reference and a guide. And I boiled it all down to these five areas. Micro to macro, all that complexity is in this five point confluence, this overlap. And when you look at it from a management perspective, 
it's really just so incredibly simple, right? Let's flip it again. Okay. Organic matter. What's your soil organic matter solutions? Minerals, mineral amendments, biology. What are your biofertilizers and biostimulants? Um, what, what cover crops, your plant roots, and then your aeration and hydration. How are you going to do that? You're going to irrigate and manage things. It turns into incredibly pragmatic solutions, but we got to go through all those lenses we talked about. Remember that there's the corrosion rates. They don't flow along pH. They're pH and EH. And yes, some of them are pretty easy. Like look at phosphorus. Man, phosphorus looks so easy. But look at nitrogen. Nitrogen's like, I'm here to be difficult, right? Well, this is why we have to manage and understand our sites at a higher sophistication level, right? Than a shake thing with pH on it, okay? We have to go to the next level. We have to recognize what the rest of science has been doing, the corrosion rates, the context. It's a, it's a larger context. And we got we to gotta know those. We got to map those out. Some of them are, are pH related, but many are not. Magnesium cycle. We need to understand what toxicity and deficiencies are, what they look like, what to do. Notice the zinc cycle, oxygen, look, and then no oxygen. The, when we oxidize the soil, like everything slows, everything stops, your high pH, oh no, look, I mean, look at this. Oxygen, again, locking things up. So we gotta make sure that we find that favorable condition. We don't wanna be too oxidized. We don't want to be too reduced. Look at the UMA sites, right? Remember, reduced, acidic, that's wet. It's waterlogged, right? UMA sites are right before you start emitting, just gassing off all your nitrogen, right? You guys see it? So, so it's a management, it's a management issue. UMA sites show up when people are letting things sit in water right before they're gassing off all their nitrogen. So it's when things get stinky, okay? This is the kind of common sense stuff that we can apply to all this. We also understand that this is why we have to be, you know, at different states in different times, be broad forking to bring in the oxygen. We use all these lenses. And even, even this lens, even the soil food web lens, diagnose where you are, what you want to do, how you want to travel, and then you find the actions. Because many of us were missing nematodes. Many of us were missing, um, were missing protozoa. Uh, and so we, we have to find the actions that fit our context. Maybe it's Korean natural farming. Maybe it's our buscular mycorrhizal fungi, but you're like, I want to do it myself. You can. Uh, maybe it's Johnson Soup compost and you're going to spike it. Maybe you want to make your own bone char. Maybe it's just passive Hugel culture. Or maybe you're literally brewing the microbes yourself. All these are pictures from regenerative soil. So what can we expect with all this? What can we expect with, with all this effort, all this change, all these new insights? Like I said, pest, infection, and virus, and disease immunity. Wouldn't that be incredible? That's what we're seeing. I'm seeing the most incredible expressions of plants this year. And, and I've just begun. Uh, the, the soil is not ideal, but it's headed towards ideal. It's already on the right foot. The plants are responding. The soil is darkening. It's been a couple months, but the cover crop's doing its work. High nutrient density. Um, the plants, they've got tighter cells. They're, they're, they're richer tasting. Um, they, they have a higher bricks reading. They are richer in color. They stare, they're heavier. You get fruits faster, you get a higher yield. Um, and then increased secondary metabolites and aromatics. So it's going to have more oils, more fats. It's going to smell more intense, going to taste amazing. And then at the same time, you're going to have to do less work less fertilizer inputs, 
uh, less watering, less everything. And, and what that does when there's less disturbance, when there's less watering, watering, half the time we're bringing water that disrupts everything. Half the time when we're, we're, we're opening things up, we're actually oxidizing and losing all the nutrients and then killing the fungi that we just spent so much time getting going in there. The less work we do, the more work they do. The biology, the minerals, the organic matter, they mature. They get better with time. And so when we set these things in motion and they take off, we ride the momentum rather than every season we're amending, we're fighting, we're babysitting everything instead of riding the momentum. Very, very different. People are lowering fertilizer yields up to 60%. They're doubling their, uh, they're getting increases of yields up to 50% or up to, or even doubling. Um, and it's in this space, it's in this space that farmers are being able to make more money. So, like I said, people are doubling their yields with this book, Regenerative Soil. This is uh, the university uh, uh, Utah State University. And I actually spoke there one of the years uh, and they were using my purple book. They were using all Elaine Ingham's methods and then they applied this and boom, doubled everything. So if you're looking for the next level, if, if you've taken all the other soil courses or you've looked at all the other soil courses, um, make sure you check out Regenerative Soil. It'll, it'll flip your lid. Now, this happened earlier this year. I'll show you the dates in a second here. So I, I so they reached out to me. There are a bunch of problems, citrus greening. Um, they had problems with the peaches. They had problems with their, their citrus. Uh, they took over this orchard and these, the, both these orchards. And they're, they're, they were distraught. And they reached out to me. This is someone whose life is on the line. Uh, I, I reached, I, I reached out to him. I don't know if he'll uh, let me use his name, um, but, but it was, it was, it was wild. He showed me this, um, and I just wrote back and and corresponded with him a little bit. He he wrote me this recently. He is so excited. There's been a complete turnaround because he was able to understand how to take those specific recipes from regenerative soil and apply them in a specific pattern that harness, harness the local IMO in that abandoned orchard that stabilizes the entire system in, a, in two months, less than one season. And if we look here, um, and my head is not in the way. I don't know if I, my head is in the way. There we go. You guys can see he wrote me February 1st. And on April 24th, he wrote me there. So it was, um, no, it was, it was, it was three months. So in three months, this is the turnaround effect. And this is the power of, of, of regenerative soil. I choose one person every few weeks to help in depth from my inbox. It's something I, I just choose to do. I get dozens of, of asks a day. And so I can't help everyone. Um, so I, I choose one person and then I help them. And then I go to the next person and I help one person. Um, and I obviously have classes where I help all the sorts of people and, you know, all over the world. Um, but, but people like Charlie, um, I make sure to help. So who else is doing this? Uh, well, Chris Trump, he's doing all the IMO side of it. What I teach is I combine all these different camps of people and combine all their lenses. So Chris Trump is one of the people that um, makes up those lenses. Chris Trump uh, with, was learned from Master Cho. He learned uh, Korean natural farming. Master Cho learned from Japanese natural farmers in this long, beautiful tradition. And we're in natural farming itself has an incredible amounts of answers and solutions 
But if we look at them from a principal space, we actually can iterate out and create new things. That's what I did. John Kemp's record of success. John Kemp's incredible. He's a peer reviewer of all my work. He's a good friend. John Kemp's um, helping regenerative ag farmers at a thousands of acres scale, hundreds of acres and thousands of acres scale. He's helping cotton farmers get off the synthetics. He's uh, he's, he's an inspirational fi figure in the regenerative ag movement. And, you know, and but but he always says it's vigorous biology. He won't ever tell you which biology. And then he'll sell you a microbial blend. Um, that's why we need multiple lenses. Because <laughs> everyone has pieces, okay? Everyone has pieces. Um, and so we combine these all things to see. Elaine Ingham, you know, she'll talk about bacteria and fungi in a very generalized way. Uh, for me, it has to be down to the individual bacteria, individual fungi, individual types too. So is it saprophytic? Is it endophytic? Is it inside the plant? Is it, you know, they all matter to me as individuals. But her, she was one of my first soil mentors. But but all these different people contributed to my understanding and led me to ask all these questions that opened up these new vistas. And when we combine all these lenses, we see so much further. And it absolutely can be scaled to farm level. Um, what if your soil improved every season significantly? How would that feel if your soil transformed the season and your, your plants were pest and disease resistant and you had to work less? And it felt like there was a special magic momentum in the soil, in the field, in the garden, in the orchard. And you went out there and you're like, man, it's just so good. Look at this. And you're just caught up. And you go out, you just walk it every morning and it's, it's your place to charge. Yeah. <sighs> Let's improve our soils. Let's take our gardens, our orchards, our fields, our farms to that next level, that regenerative level. Starting Monday, regenerative soil, the fourth season begins. This is my most popular course. This is the course that people freak out about. I've got endless reviews about this course because people can't stop talking about it. It's life-changing because soil is the linchpin to life. And when we see through the eyes of soil, we understand and see life completely differently. So if you want soil that is more organic matter, has more carbon, more life, so that you can have more nutritionally dense plants, you can get off the poisons, get away from toxins, skip them entirely, remediate all those things, and hold more water, hold your nutrients, don't leach them out. You save more money and time and have higher yields, more time for you, more time for your family, more time for your dreams and your vision, more time to expand the operation. Learn from us, join us. Soil scientists, citizen scientists, researchers, farmers, gardeners, and compost experts from around the world, commercial compost, all the above. Uh, other micros microscopy experts, all of us came together to create this information for you. And it, 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 it took several years of building towards this. I, 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 yeah, I would say that, you know, the first 20 books of my permaculture career were leading up to this. And it, that's all that research, all that work led to me being able to see the principles beneath all of these different methods. And, 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 and really lenses, they're lenses and methods. And when you combine them all, you see nature for what it is. And this is thousands of studies that I've read, hundreds of books that I've read. I have a massive library of crazy expensive books. And it's, it's wild how they wrap the information. It's wild how they just try to keep the information away from everyone. That's, I want to do the opposite. And so I brought the experts together. I have over 500 students in this community. And it's a community. It's not just a course. It's lifetime. Because uh, why would, once I gave you this information, I, I just get rid of you? 
I want you to mature with the information, ask better questions, because the deeper we go, the more insights we have, the better our management and the more improvisation and more specialization, bioregionalization we get. And that's happening right now in our community. Uh, bioregional leaders, bioregional recipes and methods are just expanding and exploding. Y you should join us. <laughs> See what people are saying. You're like, Matt, there's a lot of information. I don't know about this. I feel a little bit overwhelmed. My students, many of them felt like you. But once you get in, you'll see that it's set up so that you can go through it at your pace. If you like, you can slow it way down. It's all open. The whole course is open, um, but it's, it's set up so that you can, you can understand it. It's enjoyable and it goes, it's, it's a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> so so it, a lot of times it, it, it can move a little fast. Like we're having a lot of fun. Um, 45 minutes can seem like a few seconds as, as David says here. Um, and, 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 you know, you get lifetime access because it gets, it gets really good and folks love to take it over and over again. They love to rewatch. It's that good. How many courses do you know out there where people are rewatching? They're taking the course and rewatching it because they love it so much. That's this course. And that's why it's a value to, for it to be lifetime access, because this is a community of people with high enthusiasm, taking action and seeing real results. And these are professors at like UCLA. This is UCLA professor. And, and they're, you, they're revising what they teach, updating what they teach. Um, another UCLA professor, James Bassett, actually got uh, an award for the paper that cited this book and he's a member of this course people are really excited because they knew that it was possible to combine the biology and the chemistry into hands-on that's that, that that that's why i felt like it had to be made real and it, it it's an honor to be here it's an honor to have done this this is the thing is there's no other course like this my students know it and they're so excited the energy inside this course is unmatched that's why i'm inviting you in you guys are gonna love it okay what if you're a certified soil food web school graduate right you're like oh matt this is so nice i just want to check it out i i've got my graduate I i'm certified okay well this is the place to go to for your next level because um, I have the majority of that 500 students are actually graduates and they come to me because they need to understand what's next. So taking the time to try to, try to catch, catch up with you all, I'm in week four, even though I graduated from Soil Food Web, um, this class is one third understanding and two thirds stop the video and look through the book like an encyclopedia for the definition. So... Like I said, I designed it so that people, you know, don't get discouraged. They get, they can fit it all in. Um, but even if you've, you've, you've taken a course on soil science and composting soil biology, I'm here to tell you that the new research that's come out over the past 20 years is going to flip your lid and actually going to connect it to everything in a completely new way that's usable, that's actionable. It's understandable. It's a framework for understanding that's unlike anything else that's available out there. I took and loved Dr. Elaine Ingham's courses. Your course is completely different from her course. You give us the answer to the whys. So glad I'm taking your course. This is Mike Garcia, a multiple time award-winning front page paper occupying Los Angeles landscaper. This guy's uh, incredible. He's had an, a career of being incredible and he's taken everyone's classes. <laughs> so, 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 so this is, this is high praise. Um, and this tells you, you know, if you've taken those courses, you want to take these courses because this is how you're going to take action. You know, how you're going to understand the why behind it all. And also why, when things don't work out, when those paradigms and methods don't don't work, it's because they're missing that whole other galaxy of understanding. There's no chemistry, there's no redox, there's no individual 
um, bacteria, individual fungi. There's no epifluorescence lens, no fluorescence um, identification. So that experience has given me a completely different perspective and allowed me to create a program that's a gift. It's an absolute gift. And I'm so excited to share it with you. So don't miss it. We begin Monday. And I know it's self-paced, so you could hop in, you know what I mean? And you could go super fast or you could go super slow. Um, but I'm going to be going weekly through it with you starting Monday. And I don't know when I'm next going to do that. Um, it might be be late fall, but it most likely is going to be in 2024. There's so many things that I have to do. I'm going to be doing two different microscopy courses this year, the introductory and then the full 20 weeks. So I'm building a 20 week course, just like regenerative cell later this year. So I'm going to be all into that multiple camera shoots. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but if you want to go through regenerative soil with me, and I, I wrote it all. I know it all. And, and and I also, in my classes, you know, just so you know, I answer all the questions. I don't ever hold back. Um, so if you're asking about soil and you're this class and that, I just answer. So if you're like, well, I'm going to take this class and I'm going to ask microscopy questions too. You can, because I'm just going to, you know, dive into everything because there's a microscopy section in this course as well. So <laughs> There's like an, uh, an introduction to that introductory course already in this. So if you're into this, don't miss it. It begins Monday and we have crazy bonuses. Do you guys know this? So we've got three bonus eBooks. We've got the Permaculture Student 2 set, the Regenerative Career Guide. But we also have the Soil Secrets webinar series. This is a very popular webinar series on composting, on, on biology, on fertility, and we also have a $500 value, the Regenerative Entrepreneurs and Experts. This is a course that people have literally used as following the formulas in it to launch their own businesses, many people, and launch their own successful Kickstarters. This is one of them, this is Gavin. But then you might know Amy Landers. She also is a student of that program. And she's doing incredibly well now online. Her, her YouTube channel is massive. And so your name could be there. You could be another member of our community and you could apply those formulas and become a regenerative entrepreneur. And that's included. That's a $500 value that's included. And then in an introduction to regenerative soil microscopy, that course that I said I was gonna film, you know, that's gonna launch later, you get that. So that's a, a, another, that's, that's, so we're talking about three for the price of one. And if you want to learn microscopy, it's a weekly online class where I lecture and then we do labs together and we practice using the microscope and it's primarily bright field. And you also get membership to the RSOIL database. So when you're doing that microscope work, you can be adding into the database and keeping track of everything as well. These are mock-ups. Uh, we haven't um, put up the website yet, but but we're gathering data and organizing it in different ways and prepping. So this, this is going to go live this year though. I'm so excited. I just got to finish. I do things in order. Uh, <laughs> so, so get ready for this because this is going to be hitting this year. If you want to be part of the database, you want to be part of soil microscopy. This is the doorway in especially if you've never taken this course. This course is the foundation, the, the touchstone that all those testing methodologies go back to. So the actions, the management, all the insights, they are interpreted through this first course and first book. And so you can, but this is gonna be a place where you can improve all your skills to the next level. And this is three courses, for the price of one. And that's just one of the options. There's lots of options. Um, there's payment plans. This is the year. Things are going to only, only going to get crazier. This is the year to get your soil right. This is the year to get all the pieces set up and your momentum in place so that everything gets regenerative. Everything gets better and better season after season. And you start with a transformative season. That's the power. 
of regenerative soil. It's transformative and it carries you through. That's why people are profitably transitioning from degenerative ag into regenerative. And like organic, they have sometimes three year transition periods and they're losing money and hemorrhaging money the whole time. And regenerative is not that way. We're, we're results based, science based. Do you have questions about any of this stuff? I hope that you do. Let's get you some answers. We're going to do that book giveaway as well. But first, click on that link. Go and sign up now. This is the way to transform all your systems. If you're like, oh, I do permaculture. I love it. You know, I, I do compost. This is the next level and everything will get better because you'll save time, money, fertilizer, trips, carries, all of it. And because you're, like I said earlier, because you're not disturbing, because you're letting the microbes do the work, there's so much more momentum happening. And it's so much more refined and enriched because you're not diluting it constantly. You're not bringing in hard water that's so caustic and locking up 70% of the soluble nutrition that's available. That's what hard water does. And and the, the, this is why the passive, the, the doing less actually is doing so much more. But unless you have all the pieces, you have all the components, you got to set them up and you got to put them in motion at the right time and strategy for you and your site and your goals. It doesn't work out like that. And that's why you see so many examples. You see these hit or miss sites and then they look the same. And then, But this person's doing so well. What is it? It's one of these things. It's one of these factors, one of those five. And the thing goes all the way down like we did, and we dipped our toe in it. It's a, there's whole pools down there. There's, there's river networks down there. And so going down to the mac, micro, back up to the macro so that we can grasp it and fluency changes everything. We see with different eyes, we think different thoughts, and we take different actions. I hope that you join us. We begin Monday. This is this is a course like none of my other courses. This is the most focused, valuable, and transformative course that I have. I hope that you join us. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. The link is there. This is so much fun. Woo! Thank you all for being part of this. And I will see you soon. See you on the inside, everyone.